Three, two, one. Welcome to Libertarian Crusaders, episode number 29. And today we're going to talk about the raving reviews of this uh, cinematic uh, documentary that just came out uh, for Netflix, for no less, The Tiger King. <laughs> and uh, we have John, co-host, and we have Rachel Renner, uh, of course, one of the founding members of Liberate. And we're here, of course, to discuss, um, you know, who's really at fault, who's really innocent, uh, who should be at, out of jail, who should be in jail. And <laughs> should anybody be in jail? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Should anyone actually be in jail? <laughs> um, so we're going to take uh, positions and try to look at this as uh, unbiasedly positions as possible. If, if we could. I think this is nothing but bias. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not our bias, so it's okay. <laughs> so I guess the first thing we'll, we'll talk about is um, the one you brought up brought up earlier. Um, let's just go down to the nit and gritty of it and discuss, did uh, Carol, well, which one did you want to talk about, Carol or Joe? Well, I think since, you know, Carol didn't get her sanctuary and go more toward um, the pita based things um, until her husband disappeared. So there wasn't any animosity till then, really, since, you know, she was just part of the crazy big cat people club until that point. Um, yeah, let's let's start with the murder. Like yes. any true crime show. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I guess the myriad of theories on where the body, if it is a body and not some guy living with his mistress in Costa Rica is. So I guess what were your guys' favorite location suggestions? Right. Well, like it, so he is a wealthy guy. He has airplanes. He knows how to fly them. Um, he, he, was he like secretive? Did she say that he kind of kept saying, I don't know. I don't know about that piece, but. Andy man said he would always bury shit. And she said there wouldn't be a flight record because he'd been flying illegally for years. Mm. So we know that he's comfortable doing things illegal. You know, was he involved in the drug trade? Was he moving product from Costa Rica to uh, Florida? Wow. Like yeah. There's that, uh, that other dude, um, I want to say I'm so shitty with names. Um, the one who has the secret sanctuary and was a legitimate drug dealer. Right. Uh, yeah. So they <laughs> obviously knew each other at some point. And well, funny. I mean, why didn't he feed the guy he was sent to prison for to a tiger? Uh, that seems kind of impractical, but that's a sidetrack. Sorry. Yeah. So who was Carol Baskin working for? Which cartel in all likelihood hired her to kill her husband? Hmm. That's mm -hmm. the question. Well, I'd say she probably approached them because, you know, um, go on. Be, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from, if you're going to say it's a psychological standpoint thing, which is where they usually, you know, she, she was a rape victim as a teenager. She had already been through one terrible marriage. Um, so she had probably got it down to, you know, like, I'm not going to, take the, you know, legal way out. Cause it had probably failed her before, you know, and, um, they were getting to the point of divorce and a restraining order and all that shit. So if she did get, Oh, can I swear in this? Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Couldn't remember. Um, if it did get to that point, she would probably approach somebody else who's now, you know, sort of acting like they're severing ties with her. Um, but yeah, it's, I guess it's most telling as to when they interview the other players, like their suggestions all very much project how they would have disposed of her body. And, uh, the Moldavo guy or the guy who was scar face was patterned on, maybe it was him, you know, just because he would have prior experience. And he, I believe said, you know, like, um, he suggested burial burial seemed to be his go-to thing. And that's, I think, you know, given that his handyman always said that to her former husband was always burying money and shit, they would have had the equipment on hand. Huh? Well, yeah. I mean, don't you think it's suspect when she says, says like, look, you can't put a hand in there. <laughs> it's like, we've tried. <laughs> well, she's like the I mean, yeah. <laughs> things are expensive. Or when she says, uh, everybody knows if you really want to, you know, cut up a man, uh, you know, not do the whole um, uh, 
a snatch episode where you feed them to pigs, but feed them to tigers, you got to coat them in sardine oil. Yeah, run them up <laughs> Oddly specific. Right. I think she does uh, a really good job hiding her tracks. And whatever there was left is all in remains in Eden. That's, you know, that or it's, she's under the septic tank, right? Uh, the, the ex-husband. But going back to your point, um, you know, I guess in her shoes, uh, I think she was, she did go through a troubled, you know, uh, life as well. And this guy that she married, uh, he left behind a wife and children. I had no idea that until the, like they appear. Like <laughs> I'm like, oh man, this guy, and like all of a sudden, like his ex-wife appears, and like his children are there. I was like, wow, you left. You left so them. really, that he fooled around on them all the time. Right, right. So can you really, I don't know, feel sorry for such a man to be fed to tigers if uh, you know, <laughs> leaving his family, abandoning them, and um, I guess for her, seeing that he's repeating the patterns to do it to her. And they did mention she would probably have lost all of the animals in the divorce. So could have been a. And he had goals to, he wanted to open his own Joe exotic style zoo. And maybe she wasn't feeling that right. anymore. Pet to play, pay to play, pay to pay to pet. pet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the currency in the tiger community. Um, <laughs> pet, tiger cub pets. Uh, that's what they trade. Right. So. What's the uh, equivalency for uh, Bitcoin? Point two five. <laughs> how many tigers are you asking? How many tigers you can buy with Bitcoin? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, are you saying, Rachel, that you wouldn't want to buy have your your own pet tiger? Mm, not really. I I don't have the space for it. If you, you know, had the space I'd, for it, I'd want to give it a lot of space. You know, it would need at least an acre all of its own. And I, I would have it spayed or neutered, you know, like maybe have two litters out of it max, you know, mm -hmm. just because like they say they are endangered, but just, I mean, math is not my strong point, but a lot of people did raise the, you know, wow, these are breeding like actual domestic cats are capable of breeding if you let them. And there are not nearly enough, you know, tigers that can be kept and fed as for all these cubs that are being pushed out. And well, you know, uh, somewhere somebody's smothering some kittens and drowning them in a bucket, you know, <laughs> so that's not a pleasant image to consider. Hmm. A Doc Antle guy said that um, each one of those cats requires ten thousand dollars worth of meat a year, and Joe, if gets Joe. It down, <laughs> yeah, Joe gets it down to three thousand because of the wolf. <laughs> the, the that's, a, that's entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, as libertarians, you know, I mean, we can see that and say yes. Yeah. Praise. I try his uh, pizza. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, what he has done uh his, his entrepreneur spirit has shown that any man can be a tiger king if they really want it and believe in it i think it's uh cool how they show us all the different types of uh jungle lords <laughs> and their their lifestyle and how they have their own way of uh managing that system um, what do you think the chances are that doc antle's wives could team up and kill him and make it look like an accident oh wow that's the sequel i'm waiting for well, that's why he keeps yeah. them separated in uh, different houses. <laughs> and sleep deprived and no protein in their diet. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> right. Like Doc weak. Annal, what is he doing to these women? I mean, is tiger cub petting really that powerful of, um, you know, a gimmick to get all these women to live with him? You know, I talked about this with a couple lifestylers. He has, he has a very good manipulative dom setup going on there even just his name you know which means lord and you know disguising it as like a you know a self-improvement type thing you know like i will make you a better person through discipline and verbal abuse and all that you know like I, women around my age that i talked to have been like yeah in my late teens i would have totally been taken in by that and yeah i can see it too you know Somebody telling you, yeah, this is the right way to live your life and it's sexy and it's cool. And yeah. 
Yeah, suspend all judgment so you can pet tiger cubs. That seems that seems to be the uh, the trick. These guys are like into having a pride, you know, a lion pride. That's right. right. They really get into the the character of like these beasts. I'm surprised a guy who has like the whole tattooed face and body looking like a cat doesn't have his own uh, <laughs> lion cages anywhere somewhere out there. He wants to be the cat, not you know, uh, right. have the power of the cat around him. That's like an extra $100 premium for people to watch him roam around in cages, I guess. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, look at the people that were coming to Doc's, I guess, um, sanctuary. Um, I think uh, you can't say they're all being brainwashed. I think for them, their opportunity to just play with cats for pretty much their whole life. And they get a house, right? So they get utilities paid for. They get a much better bargain than what Joe... Uh, is offering it's a higher quality of life but it's just as hard to leave if you've had enough of it because hundred dollars a week doesn't amount to much as far as a you know getaway money thing goes yeah but you got a nice house versus <laughs> 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 and you get to play with cats <laughs> i mean the men working for joe you know they're doing some financial calculation there you know it's it's uh uh you know what, what is it um the the value of money right and uh or it's the value of the services you know different it depends on each individual right so these guys are, are thinking hey meth um and atvs you know that's worth more to me than a hundred dollars a week that doc annals offering i mean that's good and they're right? excellent you know and not attractive young women so yeah that's their niche <laughs> are you saying the uh uh, one arm uh, lesbian was not an attractive. Uh, uh, actually, the staff identifies as a um, transgender male. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm, I'm basing it. I really don't know if he has a criminal record or what. So that's commitment, though, is donating. You know, giving up your arm because you love tigers. You know, I mean, that's. <laughs> You didn't want to see the zoo go under. It's like, that's where that line comes from that everybody's quoting, which is kind of morbid. You know, this is, I'm never going to recover financially from this. That's not about Carol. That's about Sap's hand. <sighs> Sorry. Sap's hand. <laughs> what was that person's name? God. The one armed? Saf. Seth? Saf. Saf. For Saf. safety. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, Saf had the most uh, realistic kind of perspective on all this and kind of, I don't know if Netflix gave uh, Saf this uh, dumpster <laughs> thrown to sit in or that's just something, you know, you kind of find like, the, that's like the most chill spot in all of the uh, compound. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, he pets, a, you know, an actual domestic cat toward the end and just has a very, Saf's more zen-like than Doc, as far as I'm concerned, despite mm -hmm. all the little shit. But yeah, to John's uh, point, I think uh, they know what the trade-offs, $100, you know, but, you know, they can have a trailer on the land and they can do whatever they want, you know. And I think these people, they know the trade-off too. Is like they can also play with cats. Uh, <laughs> like, that, like that one guy who looks like uh, Clegane, you know, uh, <laughs> I like, I don't care. <laughs> He's... Oh, the, the way, skinny dude with the long blonde hair? Right, yeah. You know, the, that scene where he had to uh, say things against Joe in trial, and then you see him cuts through to, uh, like, him lying in his bed, and he's kind of like a plush tiger. <laughs> um, he knows that's the last time he gets to touch a uh, play with the tiger in his life. Joe's not letting him come back on, on the compound. Um, no one's going to hire him again. So I think a lot of these people... Really, do I think love. another tiger farm would totally hire anybody involved in this, you know, just for notoriety at this point. Right. I guess, well, I don't know. Would Jeff, um, the felon who took over, probably Jeff Lowe, from, right? Jeff Lowe. <laughs> the Fed, <laughs> son of a bitch. I'm Team Joe Exotic, so I have to take that position. Right. You know, Jeff's wife's probably going to murder him. Well, postpartum depression kicks in. Yeah. Nanny arrives. Did uh, Carol sent Jeff to as like her uh, secret wild card and just let mayhem ensue? Was Jeff even on the cat scene back when her husband was? He seemed like he was just sort of coming into it after the fact. 
Like, it sounded like he just wanted Tiger Cubs to bring back to Vegas with him. <laughs> so that he, could, he and his wife are swingers or something, so they yeah, wanted right. to be able to, to like coax young women into. But the um, my my theory on him yeah. is that he's not a swinger. Um, he is a Fed. He's an FBI informant of some type, and they he just appears with a bunch of money and and like a lamborghini all stupid things that some dummy would think that this is oh this guy's got money and uh that's that's what they thought he brought to the table and he was coming in to rescue him and re- in reality he was a part of an investigation i like this theory yes i am also on board with this theory um well i guess with, with all of this do you think uh joe hired uh the hitman the guy that he <laughs> talked about so much about hating <laughs> having nothing to do with uh i don't know what his name is again but um would give him money to do the hit i i think he he might have in a really messy haze <laughs> Like sort of a Thomas Beckett thing, like, will nobody rid me of this meddlesome priest? And then he sobers up and he's like, oh, I actually gave that guy the money. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he just spent it on strippers. I guess if we base it on uh, strictly what we've seen through Netflix, I don't know if uh, Joe has ever done meth. I mean, he has all his teeth. Right. Do you remember him really early on going to do the just say no to drug shit? In schools, that's what made it particularly brilliant. And then they yeah. come up to the very end. Oh, yeah. and the idealistic. Uh, <laughs> I think like, um, it, I don't know that he uses meth, but maybe he makes it very accessible for the young men who he's trying to uh, delude into, um, you know, forming a, a relationship with him, though. I mean, uh, that's another whole can of worms, though, of course, <laughs> is the fact that the, the accusation is made that those that none of those guys are actually gay. They're just um, straight guys who he just pays to marry him or something, sleep with him. Uh, pretty much just came out and said that. Well, the one that was still alive. <laughs> That's right. Not the one that accidentally shot himself uh, on camera. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, hmm. I mean, I don't know what that says so much about Joe. You know, there were felons and other kinds of uh, ill report people on, on there as well. And that could have influenced, uh, I don't know. I, I, in terms of his relationships, I guess, uh, well, I don't know. Who, who has a, maintained a better relationship? Uh, Joe, who has never killed any of his partners. Maybe one has driven to suicide, but Carol um, ended her relationships with tigers. We don't know this for sure. <laughs> oh, sorry. So here's They're a better question. Like, you no, know, he's going to do something slick. You know, he's moving all these cars and animals, you know, offshore. Maybe it was all part of a plan that either worked great or went terribly wrong. And she has nothing to do with it. Her tagline, though, isn't that the biggest injustice in this entire documentary? The, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I mean that really screams what? like that really that's her tagline. Yeah, that's the the lead off for all of her little videos that she she puts out, and it really <laughs> just makes you want to open up your wrists right there. You know, anybody else feel that way? Or? Right, yeah. Did you just yeah. whisper that in his ear at night? <laughs> hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's... <laughs> All right, uh, I want to say, you know, let's have an objective uh, opinion on this. Who objectively is the most relatable character in the show, and why is it Joe Exotic, the Tiger King, Moldonado, Pash's uh, campaign manager, Joshua Doyle? The guy who says, uh, I'm a libertarian, but... Uh, Fuck the feds. Or right. Are we supposed to address the fact that he's sort of shifted sides since then? Or <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's kind of weird. I can't really ignore that. We're uh, supposed to stay on script for became, just enough entry. He right. became an Elizabeth Warren supporter <laughs> after, the, after the fact. We come to learn. Or he's uh, an inside man just to, uh, you know, report back on the details, right? And intel and, you know. 
Yeah, that poor guy. Um, I mean, he witnessed. Wouldn't you kind of lose your direction in life and maybe support Elizabeth Warren if you witnessed a guy like yeah, shoot himself? Right. He was the one with the Home Alone face. Right. That was him. Oh. Right. They have a video of him <laughs> reacting. I mean, that was like real. Wow. Yeah. So he's like libertarianism. I'm a libertarian campaign manager. And the guy blows off his head in front of you. He's like, oh, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> and his content has been great. I mean, he says uh, at one point, he's like, Joe has no idea what a libertarian is. And then he's like, Joe will never have an idea of what a libertarian really is. And, you know, isn't that true of every other libertarian besides like you or me? You know, like we do, that's pretty much nobody else is a real libertarian. So I think he was really onto something there. And uh, I remember Joe's campaign points and they, they <laughs> were not really just straight party line. They were very vermin supreme, you know, like, you know, a, a tiger cub for everybody. Um, yes. I'm, I mean, I, uh, yeah, they, they were very random and very, you know, just, just tailored for publicity. So, yeah. I believe he said one of his campaign promises was that, it was that he was gayer than a $3 bill. So <laughs> I think he was uh, the first, uh, gay candidate running for president hero all right yeah. hero uh <laughs> what, what did uh carol have to uh comment about that anything homophobic you you, you act like i'm just you know, <laughs> um, well i i'd say her present husband given the fact that he's um you know, um, well, he definitely seems to take a more um, tender, submissive role, given their wedding pictures and all. And he was singing show tunes to her, a number from Camelot at one point. I'd be surprised if he wasn't by. So I think she can play that card if it comes right down to it. That, you know, huh. have you seen my husband? I don't mind men who go both ways. You know? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen our wedding photos? He, he seems like a semi-relatable person. And then... You see that weird photo of him being the uh, <laughs> on the leash, and you're like, "Wait, this isn't the image that he's putting out there." You know, well, he's keeping. That was fine with his padlocked dick, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I do like how whoever did this uh, Netflix series. I thought for a minute it was the guy in the cowboy hat until the scene shows where he's like crying into his hands practically because all his videos were taped. And that guy is not the director. <laughs> He's the guy who should have created this documentary series. Uh, All yeah. right, here's a fan question. Is it fair that uh, Kara essentially got away with murder when she's guilty of many of the same crimes Joe committed as well as murdering her husband? Like in terms of uh, Joe, uh, they say that he killed a couple of his cats, right? Shoot him, shot him with a gun and buried them. But she also has a, a place, a burial for her own cats, right? I'd imagine that's kind of what you do with an animal. Sometimes if they're sick, you would have to put them down. But I those think, are marked with headstones. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is a circle of life sort of thing. I think Joe is very in tune with, uh, with the way how nature works. And, you know, these bodies have to be interned into the ground so they can create uh, the continuous with that natural harmony. Whoa, a, a live oh, wow. cat, <laughs> live wild cat. You want to pet it, don't you? <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, uh, as far as that that trailer of videos burning down, um, part of that was that Carol Baskin was was suing him, and so the assumption there is that he burned it down on purpose so that she wouldn't be able to access a bunch of that video because video has a lot of him uh doing probably not so legal stuff with the cats and uh I, I believe that you know i think that that is a good reason for him to want to burn that down also she would have gotten all the money from all that in, instead of him joe exotic getting it so uh yeah that was a bummer but it seems like those people's lives are so chaotic they just don't uh you know that's just a fact of life like burning down burning stuff down it just happens <laughs> I guess and that's trying to milk it for money. He wanted creative control back, you know, and he realized that, Oh, this guy has been producing my shit all this time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not in control of it and not getting all the payment I can. He got, he got really stage mom toward the end. Mm, yeah. it, was, it was like a family. It seemed at first. And then just, Oh my God. Sorry. 
Um, Here's another fan question. Could this entire debacle have been avoided if there weren't so many strict government regulations on keeping big cats? With most things like this, if people can be more out in the open about it, you know, like with most things like sex work and, you know, the drug trade. Yeah, I think so. I think there's, it's weird how, you know, I don't like necessarily these guys. I mean, but I do see that, you know, people should have a right to care for these animals. Now, if it turns out you're actually, I think there's some libertarian argument against mistreating animals, like being violent toward animals, torturing animals. I think that that rises to a, a point where, you know, you're violating um, some, some libertarian principles there, but so, but I think these guys should be able to, to have um, zoos. They just shouldn't, uh, you know, they should be held accountable if they break terms of, of contracts involving their, uh, their animals. I don't know. That's a good question though. I think, uh, I guess this kind of starts like who started this battle, right? Uh, I think it was Carol because she didn't like her competitors and she thought a good way to get rid of them is through the uh, government system. She's out there peddling her, you know, leopard uh, suit, looking like a cat woman uh, and trying to make a, a name for herself out there in, in terms of, uh, well, if she can pass this legislation, none of them can compete against her, right? I find her a, a strike against Carol and very uh, nefarious means to kind of knock out her competitors in a very uh, Machiavellian uh, corporate, you know, underground war. Well, she never ran for office. <laughs> it's like it is a bit like uh you know people using government against they do this all the time right they use government against all their business opponents i mean big big businesses do this against smaller businesses so she i think she and she also recently had this epiphany about well i am one of the good guys i don't breed tigers i just rescue tigers and that makes but she's effectively doing the same thing as these guys, except for breeding. Right. She has a different way of uh, describing the process uh, than uh, what Joe just straight up and tells you what's going on. Um, I think uh, one of these, I guess the thing that will vindicate all these people, and well, Joe, at the end of all this, is uh, when people realize uh, the fraud of uh, copyright. Because uh, that's really what uh, she got him on. Because he took a very similar logo with the eyes uh, and put that on his uh, trucks and, uh, and and everything and went out there saying, like, this is us. Um, this is what we do. And she sued him for copyright infringement. And up to the tuna, how much was the total damage? A million dollars? Three million, was it? Three million. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course, when you are, were put into such undue stress, uh, animals will suffer, you know. This uh, suffering of cats that she has sought to prevent and rescue, she had put all these uh, undue stress uh, upon them, leading inevitably to him having to put down five, six cats uh, in his backyard. And he doesn't have headstones because she had just robbed him of <laughs> the machinery of to create them. Mm, yeah. Should have right. gotten in that helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> He took himself on a helicopter ride and buzzed that cat and gave it seizures. <laughs> so how would, um, I guess John was kind of touching upon it. Like how would the market uh, punish these people? If they're doing stuff that uh, are seemingly not good, right? Um, at least here versus like other places around the world, it's unheard of like uh, animal abuse. A picture of, if, he had, if there was a video of Joe like punching a, one of these cats in the face is like, his whole thing would have been over. Um, if it was somebody, I don't know, some part of East Asia where they do that, you know, they'll eat the cat, but they don't look at that as animal cruelty or abuse. And for them, they have a different uh, approach to this. Whereas over here, any kind of animal fighting, any kind of animal abuse, they shut it down quickly here. Um, so I guess that's what I'm thinking. Like, how would the market solve these problems if there was animal abuse? Is this got to show, uh, you know, Everyone's got iPhones. You got all these people sneaking into these compounds trying to find videos. But the only video you did find actually was sent to Joe of Carol 
killing those bunnies. No, that was a still image. And much <laughs> like much like the Third Reich, Joe filmed everything, including his death threats. So, you know, that, that <laughs> was the rope he hung himself with. I'd uh, say he equalized himself out in all of that. Mm. Yeah, and I would say it wasn't really enough until he hired somebody else, because much like Carol's husband, a death threat by the person himself is just free speech. Yeah. At what point does it become a death threat? Right. Like he, when the money changes hands, is that officially the moment where he's serious? He's not just saying this. Mm hmm. Huh. Well, like, I'm sure if there is someone who put a. Uh, puppet of me and took out i guess a revolver and shot it and took a video of it and put it on the internet i would take that as a real threat right uh, the police threat force <laughs> right um so i don't know at what point is uh your defense of yourself that you can initiate to kind of thwart that threat so would Kara be in the right to kind of pursue any even government means to kind of shut down that threat? Well, that's why they had to bring in the hitman, whether right. he was real or not. <laughs> right. That's the thing is, is it, it's like, okay, Car Carol, you're not going to ever be in danger, but you're not going to have to hear about this Joe exotic guy anymore because what we're going to do, we're going to send this Joe, Joe Lowe or whatever, yeah. Jeff Lowe and oh, uh, yeah. his sidekick up there and they're going to entrap him. And we won't be hearing from Joe Exotic anymore. They didn't get like, uh, you got third place in the libertarian vote, right? I think you get like 30-some uh, percent. It could be. I'm liking this theory that John has that the Fed set him up. He was gaining traction, popularity. They knew that Carol had it coming. She killed her husband. And this is the guy who can bring uh, her ex-husband, uh, you know, recompense. <laughs> Um, and the feds don't like that. He is a uh, openly gay libertarian running for politics. It's a threat to the system. They have to say what he wins if there's no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is uh, an expert testimony. I know we said we we're going to stick here to uh, Netflix, but I believe OJ Simpson came out and said she did it. She definitely did it. There's a man I, I trust with my life. Right. Really. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't doubt him for one, one single moment here. And also, OJ, sneaky, sneaky, not to change the subject, but sneakily way ahead of everyone on coronavirus preparations. Oh, yeah, the Costco pictures. Right. <laughs> the gloves I does so now fit. my dad, it was weird. <laughs> um, out of all these characters, um, could we agree that uh, Joe is the only one that showed uh, character development? In uh, a downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> um, like he's, he's the one that uh, had his crazy rise to uh, Tiger fame. But you had this moment in the end that kind of uh, clinched it that maybe this did go out of hand. And he had this uh, moment with these two gorillas that he let run out of the cage and they hug each other for a while and he's had this moment of clarity of, of like regret in his eyes. Um, a story arc, you know, as a hero of a thousand faces and that's his journey that he had to go through. And you look at Carol, how exactly does she grow from this? I, I think we're seeing her fully formed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was the fundamentalist you know teenager having to get into a marriage to escape her you know stifling childhood there's the you know the wife who threw a potato at her husband and you know ran out of the house and found a sugar daddy only to find out that he's going to cheat on her left and right um and now she's you know an autonomous individual who seems to be in a healthy relationship and is doing something she really believes in so Hmm. That arc happened before the documentary even began. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think I think that she's uh, she really projects at first glance. You ever like you ever run into like a homeless guy on the street, and he at first you're like, this guy's making sense, and then he just like totally changes the subject about aliens or something like that. You're like, oh, whoa, okay, 
all right, this uh, now I know why this guy's, you know, on the street. But the, she, she's like, I could see how you could kind of take her and her husband seriously for a little while. Um, I don't think she's learned anything from any of this. I think, I mean, you shouldn't push people and their buttons all the time. Because, yeah, you, you might push the buttons of like a, a Joe Exotic and he totally loses it. And, yeah, he's wrong for trying to, you know, maybe kill somebody. <laughs> I don't know how serious that, that was. But it's, it's, uh, it makes you think, okay, you don't always have to, you know, push people and push people until uh, they, lose, they lose their shit. Well, I guess she learned how to become maybe a, a sociopath, like simply not to care. And maybe Joe learned to not care and then care again. So, okay, maybe he gets more character development points. I will say that ask Joe, who has ever worked for you and take care of your tigers? He can name all of those people. Ask Carol if she can name all the employees and volunteers and people who have who've Tended care to her tigers. She can name not a soul. She Unless- admits she's there for the tigers, but she doesn't really <laughs> like people that she's shy. Joe craves adoration, you know. He, you know, totally. She's shy. Do you really think that then she's fit to run uh, Animal Kingdom? Um, in the same way, like Temple Grandin is fit to know how animals react in slaughterhouses. Like she's, you know, her eyes are on the animals, not on, oh, people love me. Razzle dazzle. Mm. I didn't really particularly see those cages being as uh, wide open and, in, uh, I guess, in terms of uh, range free, I guess, as she's trying to raise these tigers. It was hard to tell the dimensions of them because there was more vegetation in them. But you figure a tiger wants thick vegetation. That's where it's happiness. It's not a plains animal like a lion. Does a tiger also want a small box to put his head in? To, I think uh, they did that food. because unlike, you know, Joe's staff, they weren't distributing meat on top <laughs> of their hands because that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I think we learned that in the music video. Oh, that was so great. You think that's how uh, Shay uh, lost that arm? Well, I... That didn't really show the incident before. That just showed when they were bringing... Where, why did they have a stretcher and all those EMT jackets on hand? I do like that he switch, had time to he pause. so many wardrobe changes. Switch oh out into the bomber jacket and do his pose like... Little <sighs> <Riker's knee. laughs> um, I will say that... Uh, out of, out of all those people, though, I, if, if I had to choose one person to go to jail and one to be free, I'd have to pick Joe because if he were to be set free and Carol went to prison, Joe would, from all this renowned uh, national hero s- status, has brought more attention to the plight of animals. And Carol, I've never heard of Carol until the Tiger King. Right. I've Have never we heard, heard of any of them giving money to like rainforest conservation or anything? No. Was that touched on for any of these people? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I, think, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's a money making operation, man. <laughs> you know, they all these cats. Yeah, you know, you'll see the cats and you'll care about them in the wild by seeing them in captivity. Uh, no, you're you're getting your tiger fix in captivity, so you're not going to really care about where they are in some other country. If the end game (laughs) is about creating the best life possible for these cats and Joe being out of prison and Carol put into his place, uh, I think Joe would do a lot more work a hundred times than that, that Carol could ever do. He got out of prison to kind of bring more of this attention to He do a tour for the rest of his life, going across the country, ending a, uh, older cultures from eating tigers. Uh, I, I could see him going out there with the with the whip. Um, he used to do magic, you know. You, you say that sort of thing, like performances. Siegfried and Roy do that with grown ass tigers. He wouldn't have to breed them. Why doesn't he do a show like that? Right. He, maybe he would. Maybe he sees this again. He has a uh, room to develop his character and grow from this. And maybe he'll see that's not uh, how we should be doing this. He saw those two monkeys holding each other. So maybe this this way of life isn't for these animals. Uh, and I think uh, he will look at uh, his operations. So yeah, it's inhumane. 
look at Keros Inhumane. Um, still not probably a doc, but outside from that, <laughs> I do like how he tried to throw him under the bus for a minute. It's like he's got gas chemical sheds out there for tires. <laughs> and Doc's like, <laughs> this guy's crazy. <laughs> Clearly, Doc has received the accusation that he's a cult. And he's like, okay, been over it a zillion times. Not going to talk about it. Like he's a, he reminds me a lot of uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Did you get that vibe at all? Oh yeah. yeah. You know, Philip Seymour Hoffman was in that thing about Scientology or just Philip Seymour Hoffman in general. Just his mannerisms and his appearance. And maybe Philip Seymour Hoffman didn't die of an overdose, but instead just became Doc Antle. Antle. I don't know. I did hear, well, well, at the end of the Netflix thing, it said that his uh, compound was raided, right? It doesn't say exactly what for. So I'm thinking having one too many wives. I don't know what the laws are in, uh, in that state. <laughs> yeah, bigamy. Right? right. <laughs> I'm guessing since he's a doctor of spiritual science, he didn't really apply for a traditional type marriage. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Going back to uh, who would, um, and if the most productivity is for the uh, welfare of these cats, and one has to go to jail and the other has to come out, um, who do you think could provide most better welfare for these cats all over the country and bring more of that attention to the world? Carol or Joe? Neither of them. I think somebody who can make interactions with adult sized cats profitable and accessible because you know the the just making it one big retirement home until there are no more domesticated tigers left isn't going to work and the really nilly breeding isn't going to work either from either an ethical or a safety standpoint i like your uh the only way to win is not play the game <laughs> <laughs> it's a different game, Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> yeah, how much how much money can they possibly be making from this that they can afford to pay? Uh, what did he have? Like over two hundred tigers, and it's ten thousand dollars a pop. So, I mean, it's it's uh, it seems like it's it's not lucrative enough to justify the expense of operating these things, and so they just. A mar- maybe a market would just shut them down by virtue of the fact that they wouldn't be able to pay for all the meat. Right. Um, or I, I guess there was an incident where this one guy had these lines and animals and let them loose. Oh, the Zanesville guy when he snapped and set them loose over town. Man, that's wild. Uh, yeah. I was thinking for a second though, why don't we just like let them out there? Uh, people will stay indoors very much so right? Uh, you'll value your life even more, right? You know, you would uh, count your, you know, your, your the seconds, the days you have with your friends, knowing that once you leave that doorstep and trying to go to work, you could be mauled, you know, dragging into a brush, you know, it gives you a lot more uh, vigor. People become a lot more uh, excited about Joy living. de vive, you might right. say. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd make a better story to say you got mauled by a tiger than uh, you died from the coronavirus or something, or you, you choked or, you know, or you died in a car wreck. I mean, if they're that averse to cologne and have already recognized that humans will feed them if they ask for it, right? then they're probably less dangerous than sharks. You bring up another good point. Do you think Carol sent a guy in to spray cologne on his shoes? It, no, cologne would have just made him drool. Oh, right. Somebody would have had to have rubbed fish oil on his shoe. <laughs> right. Something only Carol would know. A sandwich strategically on Joe's boot. <laughs> I do like how he just took that in stride and just let himself be dragged. <laughs> and then he pulled it. Well, no one was coming to his rescue. That was the concern there. Mm-hmm. He was being a little bitch then. Well, no, he's, he's the Tiger King, right? You imagine the Tiger King still needs to uh, uh, so that he's still in charge. Um, otherwise, he's no longer a leader of the pack, right? That's how that works. And you get checked every once in a while by like, uh, what do they call it? Like the Omegas, like wolves or something like that. 
right. And yeah. verbally threaten to shoot a tiger between the eyes. Like it's going to understand. <laughs> yeah. That tiger was like, um, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what, what exactly that tiger was doing. Cause when you see them take down like zebras in the wild, they go right for the neck. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> You imagine just watching that happen and be like, oh no, there's nothing I can do about this. He's dead. <laughs> I mean, Carol, <laughs> Carol Baskin knows. At that point, if they've been raised in captivity, like what are the chances they'll be able to make a clean kill if, you know, they were all set loose for. Right. Um, I mean, you have uh, cougars out in uh, California mountains, right? Yeah, but they grew up wild. Yeah, yeah. I guess these, uh, he's they approach you like deer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Until they want your sandwich. <laughs> yeah, they, well, like, I mean, if there were wild, these things are so big and they eat so much meat that if they did become wild in the United States, it would probably be a nightmare for, like, we would no longer have a deer population, <laughs> you know? Right. Some may say that we're due uh, to call the deer population herd much to the annoyance of uh, uh, environmentalists, but, or PETA, but you have a lot of people trying to grow their gardens right now in this time of need. And you, ha- you do have all these deer kind of go out there and they ravage the gardens. And Is this all a big ploy for you to ask Maddie for a lawn tiger? <laughs> I, need, I, I, need, I need something to cash my Corona checks on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd, 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 I'd buy a tiger. I think they they seem like. Uh, how long are they playful for? Till like uh, for nine months? Mm. Yeah, was it like up to twelve like months? Weeks. Sixteen oh. weeks. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy one for sixteen weeks, and then I, I, you know, sell it as somebody else to uh, take care of it after that. But just having, are you saying if I had a tiger, you wouldn't want to come over and hang out with the tiger? Yeah. Right. <laughs> See, there it goes. It's amazing, you know. Every every woman is like just drawn to tiger cubs. Tigers. Yeah. I saw plenty of dudes on those farms. Oh my god. I saw two straight men. One of them got a crotch tattoo that said <laughs> nobody's bo- put a bullet through his head. Nobody's born gay. Uh, Joe Exotic <laughs> terms that gay with tigers and meth. He's like the Chuck Norris <laughs> of the gay community. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, did you see my, uh, this was just a comment on somebody else's thread, but uh, Aaron, my husband remembers going to one of those cub petting things as a kid. So I, I commented that, you know, my husband went to one of these petting things as a kid and now he's a bisexual cat lover. Hashtag gay agenda. He remembers it being incredibly soft. There might be something there. <laughs> um and I think you mentioned I guess we were talking about uh Doc having a place in Virginia apparently uh he doesn't own it no he just stayed there when he was a kid okay Yogaville uh, in Birm- Birmingham is that the name of the place yeah it's uh some kind of yoga uh, it's an ashram yeah it's shaped like a giant lotus so I think that's part of his slick uh, stick is saying like, you know, I'm part of this ancient uh, thing that here in America, nobody knows about. Sounds very mystical. And you don't uh, understand my complex lifestyle. Right. <laughs> um, and he's going to give you your own, uh, you know, y- yoga name and kind of that's th- that part does seem kind of culture. So we'll say that's that. extremely cultish. <laughs> But that's off the topic, off the subject. You know, this isn't about Doc. Uh, I do like that Doc is very, uh, wants to get out of the, out of any of this uh, war between them, right? I like that he's, he's not going to say any comment about disparaging Joe. And But we'll say, honestly, I like his remark about, um, I don't know, I guess this is something I saw after. No, no, he, he didn't want to say anything about Jeff, right? When they brought up Jeff, he's like, he was suddenly afraid of libel. Right, right. It kind of buys into John's thing that he knows Jeff is connected in a way that could get him into more serious trouble. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I, I clearly the the word is out about Jeff. 
Yeah. And doc is a smart one. He's not a guy put putting out videos saying he wants to, he wants to murder Carol Baskin, you know, that guy, uh, who started this whole snitching thing, uh, the guy who comes back in a jet ski in the last episode. Oh, the uh, Chucky doll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the human live action Chucky doll. That's the guy that it goes around calling the cops if people are not being uh, self quarantining or keeping their uh, social distance space uh, apart. Well, he's uh, got to be all kinds of mad, isn't he? A strip club owner? That's right. He was, wasn't he? He's so out of work right now. <laughs> I, I, it's like drive through. I believe they're just doing drive through um, <laughs> lap dances. So. So, until further notice. The, uh, yeah, he, he struck me as another Fed. You know, just he was one. Of, wasn't he one of the Jeff Lowe compatriots or something? He was one of the connections that Jeff Lowe had. I don't know, but I'm sure Jeff Lowe has spent time at strip clubs, right, they with his wife. At the same time, I don't remember exactly how they knew each other. See this whole thing where they're trying to use uh, the hitman in terms of uh, like the evidence was that he would call his friend to tell him. That, uh, and record that phone conversation as if like he couldn't have called his friend before that and say, Hey, listen, I'm going to call you in 30 minutes. We're going to pretend that I just called you for the first time. And we're talking for the first time. But what I really need you to say is Joe paid you money. <laughs> you got that? Yeah, I got it. You know? Okay, cool. All right. We're going to make this phone conversation. We're going to record it. Call you in five minutes on zoom. <laughs> right. That's uh, how could any of that, uh, gone to trial how could it that's something that uh yeah. was there ever any recorded thing between him and joe now that you mentioned it, it does seem all very uh not hearsay but the other thing conjecture right yeah there's there's no evidence just uh his word against joe's and then the only thing so if it was just that joe would have got off free i think if that's the only thing that they had uh to go to court with with the, with the jury they would say yeah this this man this Tiger King, uh, Tiger. national treasure, could not have done it. He is a free man, set him free. But you know why he's suffering in jail right now for over 20 years? Because Curl fucking Baskin can't compete. That bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's in jail because of her. Because of her, they trumped up all these other charges. And uh, she spent, what, over a million dollars making sure that she's got the whole government side to her case. We're still going to blame her and not Jeff, who is quite possibly a fed. Well, if, if it was- I can more onto the person who's watched herself murdered in effigy, both mannequin and blow up doll form, and not the guy who was probably actually working for the government, who Joe trusted and gave his fucking zoo to. And if we really want to talk about the fucker, why not him? Because if it was just him and Jeff, he would have been, <laughs> he would have been uh, innocent. But the wild card was Carol coming in and trying to ruin his life. And she would not rest until she's destroyed everything he's built for himself, destroy the lives of those who uh, worked on there. Uh, for Shane, the one-armed, uh, I thought she was a lesbian. I'm only basing what I see on uh, Netflix. And I think... Uh, destroying those lives, robbing them of their income. Uh, where are they going to go? Force them to fear for their lives uh, and not want to go to jail to turn on their best friend, on Joe, the guy who gave him something from nothing. When everyone else said no, he said, yes, I'll give you an opportunity. Um, you love cats, so how bad can it be? And she took all that away, not just from Joe, uh, everyone. He those did are, give Helen's jobs, which I think is pretty true. Right. Um, and he didn't have this very fancy volunteer service thing that uh, she has, and Joe knows them by name. Um, I think uh, when we kind of look like objectively, who's like uh, the protagonist, who's like the real hero out of all this mess, I still have to hand it to Joe. I think uh, I'll hand it to some of Joe's employees. <laughs> like uh, the blonde, like the blonde guy with the straw like hair who was like the main caretaker. I want to say his name is Rick Ryan. Um, 
Yeah, like the one who was at the end after Joe had already been arrested and was like still weeding the cages and all that stuff. And he's like, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm just here as long as I can be. And Saf, you know, Saf's still there, sitting next to the propane tank. <laughs> I came back to work after what, like five days after his hand was bitten off, you know? Family Medical Leave Act, man, take advantage of that. I wonder if they have that. Maybe the HR department at Joe Exotics Park can, could have figured that out. I don't know. I don't know. I do like uh, how- Joe had all these crazy costumes that couldn't get Saf a hook hand, you know? I mean, really. <laughs> Or maybe that's something that uh, Netflix, uh, the directors, uh, said, remove that hand for this dramatic effect. Um, And then if that's true, I don't know anything. I haven't really. Well, we saw Saf driving a car, like a little cart thing and a few other things. And it was just a stump still. There's never any. If if we find out after, after the show, we do some research and we find out that he did give. Uh, Seth, a hand. Would that, that uh, right? <laughs> that won't change the fact that he put on his EMT jacket as part of the. You know, well, there's only so much you can do. Uh, so putting you... on. <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much a man, a tiger man, can do. Um, and I win this argument because I dressed up for this. <laughs> yeah, you sure you do. <laughs> Any last uh, comments on the show? <laughs> They're thinking about making another one coming out next week. Yeah. I don't know how. <laughs> they just do a roundup of all the people and where their lives have gone and then how many teeth they've lost. Right. Yeah. Oh. Um, Intervention follow-up. I did hear that uh, Joe uh, has the coronavirus. I heard he's, he's proposing to, question. yeah, I've heard he's proposing to donate plasma once he recovers and he wants to save the lives of the tigers that have gotten the coronavirus of the Bronx Zoo, which is right. recent, a recent development. I did not hear that. I heard that too. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is an effect of Carol pretty much causing this man not just 20 years of his life being robbed and all this merit of all their employees being robbed, but to send him to a death sentence now being stricken by a plague that he would never had encounter or incurred had she never tried to had interfere with his life. not been at his zoo that millions of members of the public come through every day. <laughs> <laughs> Death will find even Joe Exotic. (laughs) I can't wait to look at the memorial that is built for him. Oh, yeah. Just pile it right on top of his husband's. Any biker gang, you know, that wants to build that memorial, I mean, there should be a competition between them, you know. Any biker gangs are allowed to build it, though, and who knows why. It's a biker thing code, I guess. You know, if they built that, though, for that kid that killed himself, he would have had to have been a biker himself, right? Yeah, I, I would think. I'm, I'm no expert. I so just like, ride a motorcycle. I don't actually know any I, of the... I'd rules. imagine you, you have... He's like, I can't escape, but he has an ATV. He's got motorcycles. I'm like, I'm sure you've been able to get off the compound, right? Maybe that, you know, the meth connection. I mean, biker gangs are synonymous with meth. Huh. Um, maybe wow. that had something. Yeah. Whoa. All right. Yeah. Joe's innocent. The, Joe's innocent. Joe has nothing to do with that meth. He Joe's got all his teeth. You can't yep. tell him that he's in charge for everything of this man's life as much as he can possibly do. He's in charge foremost than anyone. The t- the caretaker of uh these cats. Those are his first priorities. Have we gotten a good look at Joe's teeth since he went to prison? I know his hair really went downhill. You know, that could have all been a joke. All right. So I do have a a weird theory that, uh, you know, they did cloning some time ago. Dolly, uh, I think uh, a lamb or or sheep. Um, Now, this man has an uncanny 
striking resemblance, not just to Michael Keaton, who I think would be a really good actor to play this part, but uh, Trump, right? And my idea is that maybe there was a clone of Trump, a backup thing, you know, but they felt like they couldn't kill it. It'd be, you know, somebody, some scientist who grew up with the clone of Trump just set it free Joe out there. Exactly looks like Trump. A little bit, yeah. I don't see it at all. You don't see that at all? <laughs> let's Let's settle it right now. Okay. So yeah. There we go. Look at that. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, right. Uh, then, okay. Well then we gotta do Trump. Maybe a side by side. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So that in oh, terms well, of being just jowly no, and very... pale, but the mouth is higher on Joe, the eyes are wider apart. Well, I mean, the environment's oh, going to change small. the person apart. Uh, they, but the thing is, they thought this thing would uh, settle into a quiet life in Oklahoma, and maybe the meth will catch up to this <laughs> creature and you know die a weird natural death as I guess Oklahomans do out there. I don't know how they live out there, but he's got Trump DNA, and he cannot. He also has a mother and a father that he scammed the fuck out of. <laughs> right, I forgot about that part. But maybe there are just the caretakers of this clone of uh, Trump. And why would they disown him for being gay if they were being paid good money to foster the you know clone spawn of Donald Trump? Did they disown him? Because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure the mom was like signing off. Uh, yeah, when he came back and he convinced them because he didn't have money. Right, yeah. thank you so much for reminding me that Carol not just destroy the lives of these park employees, but robbed an old woman of her house. No, she robbed Joe of his money after he took it from his parents. Robbed her? She made that plea. Did you not see that plea? When she's with her husband. It's like... Strotting out his old mother. <laughs> like, I signed some papers and apparently Carol Baskin took my house. <laughs> you know who made you sign those papers? Your son. Mm. So, so the idea is this clone has Trump DNA and he cannot not be uh, out there. And so what is a clone Trump and Oklahoma to do but become naturally Kill Trump and take a, a, a tiger king of some sort, right? Maybe not a tiger king in real estate, but in Oklahoma, uh, maximizing his opportunity, he becomes this... Uh, uh, the, the art of the tiger deal uh, caretaker kind of underlay. I think he'd be very touched that you believe his press. <laughs> um, well, there are uh, ways for people to write to him. Uh, he's in prison, but people can write to him. I, th I think he gets emails. Um, it's still news. <laughs> uh, there's a commissary that people can actually uh, help him uh, have a good life before that, which uh, Carol took away from. And hopefully we can give him a better, uh, at least end if he's to pass away from this coronavirus. But hopefully he does it uh, and that he gets out and Netflix realizes that we have a lot to gain from this for him being a free man and they pour in billions um, from their subscription rate to do another trial. I don't know how they would do it. Maybe they have to uh, uh, bribe a judge or something, but you know, this guy is worth the risk and the trade-off. And I think the way we end this debate is when that happens and you see Joe is doing much better in the conservator conservative movement for these tigers than Carol, you'll change your mind. And you'll say, this man's innocent. Carol should have been in this place instead. We should at least send him some Twinkie money for bringing <laughs> us so much joy and giving us all this meat for an episode. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for gracing us with your uh, Tigress presence. Thank you, guys. This has been fun. <laughs> uh, like I said, this has, for so many people, been a great coping mechanism. So I'm glad you got an episode out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess uh, if there's any cool uh, movies that come out, I guess, from here until, I don't know how long this might go on for, but I see maybe minimum three months. Um, 
I don't, what, what's your take on that? I, I'm still at work. So I mean, right. this is the one thing I've really made a point of binging for, mainly because of all the great memes that were coming out of it and involved big kitties. So. Right. <laughs> See, in our time of crisis and panic and chaos, uh, this country needed someone to look to, to turn to, <laughs> right? And then brought us all together in this one moment of peace and unity. And we only warm ourselves in the dumpster fire. <laughs> and we can see how much Joe has brought us all together versus what Carol has lacked to do. And we have an ounce of an inkling of what he could do for the world if he was set free. Yeah, Joe Exotic 2024. <laughs> Pardon from Trump. <laughs> he'll run, he'll win. Right. Coronavirus will be gone. <laughs> Distant memory. Gone. So with that, tigers will inherit the earth. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. Stay liberated. Get off my property. <laughs>